Hi, welcome to the Worthy Physician Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Sapna Shah Hawk, a board certified internal medicine physician. Keep life simple. You are human. You are worthy. Remember what matters to you. Our goal is to help physicians remember this and to make it a reality through addressing various components of physician burnout via podcast. This is meant to be used as a tool to help guide physicians. It does not take place of professional medical help. Opinions reflected in this are my own. We will be talking with Dameda Ojeda, or Tammy, who is a dietitian, studied at the University of Puerto Rico in Rio Piedras campus and internship at the VA in the Caribbean Health Systems, also in Puerto Rico. She gives us some insight on mindfulness, as well as some insight or even tips and tricks on how to prepare simple yet nutritious meals for physicians on the go, anybody with a busy lifestyle. So sit back, grab a healthy snack, and enjoy. ...tools, applications to look at meal prepping. We don't necessarily have to spend three hours in the kitchen sweating over a stove and be mindful of what you eat. Take your time, slow down as much as you can to make sure that your body receives those signals of, hey, I actually ate, and it's good, I enjoyed it, it was a good experience, and I have some nutrition. Even if you don't, like, I cannot eat slow. Right. (laughs) And that's my reality. And I have to, I have to, you know, again, we go back to awareness, acceptance, reality. Right. I can't eat slow, period. I have tried. So I put the fork down. I've, you know, I've counted my chews and I, I, I'm like, this is BS. <laughs> right. Once I, put One, the, two. once I put the fork down, I'm off doing something else. I'm like, a, like, it's oh, stupid. what was I doing? What was I doing? Oh yeah, I was eating. I'm going to sit down and, and take another bite and then look around doing something else. You know, right. Just- so I, what I would say is if you are one of those like me that cannot eat fast and let's say you have 20 minutes, 30 minutes of a break for lunch, then eat your lunch and then mm-hmm. go take a walk. Yeah. Because what you're doing is, if it's not super hot and if it's hot, go ahead and do it inside. Right. Because what you're doing is taking you away from where you normally eat so that you take away that visual signal of, oh, this is where I eat. So I, there's more food here, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're exercising, which right. will help you use that food a little bit better. Right. Will help you decrease stress. Mm-hmm. You know, will help you also kind of, at least to me, exercise helps me a lot with my anxiety. And right. it's really funny because I know I have an exercise because my anxiety starts spiking. Uh-huh. It's, it's super interested. Um, of course, find the exercise you like. Right. <laughs> I like dancing. Yes. And I'm starting to like walking. It, mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a little bit of a love and hate relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but and, or do something. So keep your take your mind or, or move away from where you normally eat. If you're done eating, right. don't go for seconds. Mm-hmm. Move away from where you normally eat. Paint, walk, play with the I don't know. Do something that's fun or, you know, whatever. Right. So that you stop thinking about food. That's all the idea. I yeah. prefer walking because, you know, it is exercise. And again, walking a little bit after you finish eating or exercising, mm-hmm. let's say 30 minutes after you, you're done eating. Right. If it's, if it's strong exercise, if it's a brisk walk, you can do it after you eat. But if it's a strong exercise, wait a little bit. Yeah. It's great because you have all that nutrition, that energy right there. So you can get through that exercise better right have you exercised empty stomach it's not fun it's horrible no yeah it's not fun no so you know it, you kind of kill two birds with a stone yeah. you have energy to exercise you decrease stress right and you don't need more so three birds yeah with a stone. so but i think that's really oh, i remember the protein powder what oh it just bumped in my head it's e-a-s the okay. brand, it's uh-huh. like three letters um, capitalized, E-A-S, protein powder. And okay. it's an Abbott product. Mm-hmm. And again, it, I, I use it because it only has three ingredients. Unless they, you deal. know, read, but still go ahead and read stuff because producers can actually change ingredients without telling you. Right. 
So every time I buy something, even if it's something I always buy, I always look at it because, you know, you never know when they mm -hmm. decide to change it. But um, EAS okay. is, is what it is. And then they have it soy and they have whey. Okay. So if, if any, if any healthcare worker or physician wanted to address burnout, you know, I always tell them, um, look at your, what's stressing you out. If you can right. take a step back, change your situation. What would you, what would you say to them? I mean, would you welcome them as a potential client? I mean, obviously you work in a healthcare system where it's kind of, but if you were, if you were just, would you encourage them to go to a dietitian? Because honestly, I um, would say, go ahead. I was going to say, we're, we're just, we're horrible patients. And, and we, the truth is a lot of us don't know a lot unless we've done personal research, gone through it ourselves, whatever. I would say if they're ready, go. Yeah. Yeah. Only if they're ready, only if they understand they have something that needs to be changed or fixed or improved. Sure. If they're not there, yeah. no, it's a waste of time. But if they understand that eating does make a difference and they understand that their eating habits are causing or are affecting, may not be the cause, right. but it's not helping. Right. Then absolutely. Absolutely. We're not all created equals, just like not all doctors are the same. Not right. all dietitians are the same. So I right. can't promise that you're going to find a dietitian that's amazing. You know, I have to be real, right? right? I have to be real. Just like my doctor is in El Dorado, even though I live in Wichita, because he's amazing and not everybody knows how to work with me. And I'm not leaving that man until he retires or passes. Right. So right. that said, we're not, we're not all the same. So, so do one, your research find one, on find that find one that will work with you, meet you where you're at. And I think it's right. a big deal that understands. Right. Cause right. I remember I went to a dietitian when I was anorexic. Yeah. Um, I went to a dietitian and she like handed me this, you know, photocopied 50 times paper with a plan and here, follow this. And I looked at my dad and I was like, what is even like, what, what? So she kind of went over it a little bit and then sent me home. And so I was like, I don't even understand what this is. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't get what I need to do. And I was 17. Mm -hmm. I don't wow. get what I need to do. You know, like, I don't know what I'm doing, but granted back then healthcare did not believe in dietitians. So of course, you know, your, your visits were limited if at all covered. Now right. we do have a little bit more coverage, still very limited. Right. Um, and of course, people want us to be cheap, but, you know, we have a career to a profession to pay to right. we studied and we have loans. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, we have to pay. Right. We have a life that we need to live. Um, so we're not going to be ten dollars a visit. But, you know, but I always it's going I always think about same. how much people sometimes spend in like. Medication. In this, right. Medications. Crappy right yeah. and then also like it the magic shakes you know this shake is going to help you lose 20 pounds in a week <laughs> right. and then you know and then they yeah. show you these amazingly cut people like you know they have not had an ounce of fat in their bodies in forever and right. you go and buy it because it's easy and it's quick supposedly and right. then you spend 20 dollars on a bottle that you're not going to use and it's not giving you anything other right. than maybe a stomach ache so <laughs> right right but it's true like some of the supplements all they do is they prevent you from absorbing fat but guess what you need guess fat. where that well that and guess where that fat is going if you're not absorbing it in the stool in the stool and then the problem is then you get you know you don't get to absorb the vitamins that are fat soluble because right. you're pooping your fat you're pooping the fat away right so right. then you get deficient in a k e d d which we're already so, deficient in most of us absolutely that is actually the one supplement i tell even my kids take it yeah. the one supplement i tell everybody yeah. vitamin d yeah that's definitely and it's actually been linked to um, emotional health or mental health yeah um Bone constipation health. bone health, everything it's you like know, everything we have spent a lot of time talking about gi issues <laughs> but because it's true though it, because it's one thing that you got to think about and it does affect how you feel and and you're right you know i don't know when I, the few times i was like when i was anorexic i wouldn't poop 
And my dad was like, Tammy, of course you're not going to poop because you haven't eaten anything. Right. But then you feel like crap. Yeah. Because you're so bloated and everything's stuck in there. Anyway, moving on. FOS. <laughs> <laughs> not not moving on, moving so on. For, the, for the constipated people, but for those in the back of the room, you know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help it. I right? know. No, it's, it's totally what this is about, right? Having fun by well, well, talking yeah. about hopefully something that helps somebody. Yeah. Um, hopefully. Hopefully. But, I mean, nutrition has a lot to do with your pelvis and your joints. And, you know, if you're eating a high inflam- highly processed, high, highly inflammatory diet, low in fiber, very processed, you're not going to shit. Your knee's going to hurt like hell. You're going to feel old you're as gonna hell. You're going to have more pain. You're going to, right. More pain. Increases mm-hmm. blood sugars, blah, blah, blah. Increases cortisol. So by when we cut that and we cut the processed crap, we increase the fiber gently, gently. Otherwise, you're going to be bloated and asking for an NG tube with a rectal tube at the same time. Five grams, like increase by five grams a week or by at a day. time uh, per meal. I always say try it for about no, no per day. So okay. if let's say you figured out you have about five grams of fiber a day. Right, right. So for the next three days, do 10. Yeah. Evaluate. Are you okay? Are you good? Then up it, right? So five at a time is kind of what I always tell my people because, you know, and every three days, kind of give it three days, get your body used to it, mm-hmm. increase your water right. as you increase your fiber. I can't give you a number of water because it depends on how much you drink and how much you need. Right. But, you know, if you don't drink any water, then at least a glass with every five grams that you're adding right. will help you. Okay. Um. Yeah. What were we talking about? See, now we derailed again. <laughs> no, we were talking about, um, well, I was making a reference to the stool humor we've actually really had throughout this podcast, yeah. but I'm sorry. Um, yeah, toilet, toilet it's all about the pee and the poop. Well, quite frankly, it's all about the yeah, pee and the poop. a lot of it it's is. true. You can actually tell a lot. By that's the- one of the ways, exactly. It's that's one of the way it's I you're you're laughing, but it's true. No, I know it's true. I'm laughing because I know it's true. That's one of the ways you know how your insights are working. I always tell my my kids, look at your pee and look at your poop. Right. And when they were babies and like little like toddlers, I was yeah. always like, don't flush the toilet. I need to look at it because you know if it was really dark uh, uh, yellow pee, then they need to drink more water. If it was kind of pale, they need to drink less water. Mm-hmm. Same with the poop. If it was really hard, then they need more water, more fat. You know, depending on what it is. Right. If it if it's brown, go to your doctor. <laughs> Don't wait. If you have brown pee, oh, go yeah. to your doctor. Right, right, yeah, for sure. See, it tells you how your body is working. Pee and right. poop. Amen to that. If it's if you have to strain, if you have hemorrhoids because you're straining so much. Talk to your doctor. Get a dietitian involved. Right. I mean, but I right mean, again, we're not magical, right? No, we cannot be magical. Nobody can. I mean, and, and that goes back to the help is on that of the patient. But um, right. I, I like I like using dietitians even even now where I'm practicing back in Winfield. I I still like using the dietitian, um, because it's a tool. Right, we got. I, I I can't stay and talk to a patient yes. for an hour. I, I can't. I can't. I'm not gonna. It's not fruitful for me because I don't have the knowledge. I'm not gonna get reimbursed. It's multiple things, right? But I can get you to somebody that. Can, well, uh, and I I, I re- go ahead. Right. Remember when when we started? I I rem- I remember when I started visiting. I was with uh with the teens. I was like, how can I? get them to see my value. So the first few things I always did was I always told you guys, I can take that education that you cannot do and your nurse cannot do. Mm -hmm. You have a high blood sugar patient. I can talk to him. Like I can explain to him how blood sugar works and the side effects of a high blood sugar and why his blood sugar. I can do that. You don't have to spend time on that, you know, right? Cause I am actually, it's that it's my scope of practice. I can do it for you. And I think, that was uh, part of the benefit. Absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. then you, you didn't have to spend 30 minutes in a patient explaining how blood triggers worked, <laughs> you know, I could do it for you. Mm-hmm. And then the nurse didn't have to do it either. Cause I could do, and I'm a lot cheaper. 
<laughs> well, not only that, but you know, if if a lot of times I do try to break down what A one C was and what a, what A one C is. Oh yeah, you will. But but then you know they they come to you and they they you reinforce that and then you look at what they're eating and how okay if we switch a couple of things right. you know, a couple of things a week you know um, what is that going to do to your blood sugar how right. is it going to make you feel it also and also helps with chronic pain chronic fatigue right high blood sugars absolutely high blood pressure mm-hmm. absolutely oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's kind of how this works. If you eat a little better, your blood sugar is better, your blood pressure is better, then you have less pain. Mm -hmm. Because imagine that pounding blood pressure on your joints, you know? Or even on on, on the the head and the... On the brain. Yeah. Yeah. But but these are things that we don't think about as physicians or healthcare workers because... Oh, I just don't think we really stop. And- we're superhumans. Right, we're superhumans. I don't need that. That's for that's for sissies. If I stop and say that, then you know I'm I'm uh, whining or I'm going to be ostracized because I'm not going to pull the you know triple shift. Which yeah, make fun right. of me. I don't care. I'm not going to do that anymore. You know, that's that's part of why I always share that I have generalized anxiety and I've yeah. even have panic attacks because we're humans, you know, and yes, I eat, I try to eat the best I can, but you Mm -hmm. know, it's not a magic wand and I have a condition and you know, we also need sometimes I'm okay. And sometimes I need a break. (laughs) And, and sometimes we just need to enjoy life. Right. I mean, life is meant to be lived. Right. Life is meant to be lived. Um, but everything in moderation and, and a lot of times what we see with physicians and healthcare workers like i said go to the nurse's station or the the, the doctor's lounge and there's donuts and cookies and all this sugary crap just because well that's available number one number two it's a reward center number three it's something quick number four i don't give a shit if i'm gonna do it in two more hours uh gets me through right now and i only have 30 seconds to eat so forget chewing forget mindfulness i'm just exactly gonna, and it's it's that's something we have to be aware of something that we have to when we're ready, cut the self-perpetuating cycle. Right. But. And I, I think part of the, the main thing, like you, we started this whole thing, you asked, you know, what would be that, how to get started? Mm-hmm. It's, you know, plan your day today, right. right? So like if tomorrow, you know, you know, you're a resident, you know, you're going to be running like crazy. Take 10 minutes of your night. I know you're tired. I know, you know, you're tired, you're exhausted, but take the time because it's worth it. So yeah. then make your sandwich for tomorrow's lunch, you know, prepare your smoothie stuff. So all you need to do is blend it in the morning, mm-hmm. you know, get a little a handful of nuts in a bowl so you can shove it in your mouth instead of the donut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? right. And that way, and you know, it shoving a handful of nuts in your mouth, it's the same amount of time. So, yep. you know, and it won't cause you the GI issues and it won't, and it's super healthy and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right. all the stuff we know, right. but that's why I always say you have to be ready and willing because right. the donut's going to taste a lot better, <laughs> you know, Actually, the donut's going to be better. I'm not and a you fan. Gotta... I'm not a fan. No, because I mean, no, if you look at the donuts, I mean, I like donut... cake. It's got to be tiramisu or red velvet, something that's really worth the calories. I mean, I, I kind of look Stop. at yum. I kind of look at sprinkles and say that's constipated unicorn poo. What? You got to tell that to my son, my youngest. He loves sprinkles. Um, <laughs> oh, he'll like get it on his hand and like eat it like that, and you know it's <laughs> crazy. Anyway, I got some weirdo kiddos, you know, but I love them so much. They that's make okay. me happy. And that's the thing too, you know, I've, I've learned to enjoy them. And that's, that's that, uh, it's that awareness. I don't know if I right. told you, I, I cut Facebook, I cut Instagram, I cut all my social media because I was missing so much, so mm-hmm. much. And COVID, when, when COVID started, you know, put a lot of stuff in perspective. Mm-hmm. And then we were all stuck here 
right in the house right. Right. <laughs> thankfully thankfully we had just bought the house and it wasn't the 700 square foot apartment that we right. were in oh, man. Yeah. thankfully right. that said you know we got we were stuck so i taught him how to cook i you know we played board games so as bad as it was and as awful as it's been it's you learn one first you had to be aware you know we we we're stuck mm -hmm. right now this is not good what how can we make this better and so you know we played we cooked they had they were forced to go outside for at least an hour <laughs> Yes. yes my oldest got this thing where he would just lay down on the sun like we have a little patch on yeah. in the back yeah, yeah. he would just lay down there and get sun i'm outside i was like okay that's but that's great though <laughs> just I don't mean... get burnt um <laughs> but but, but yeah. the, the nice yeah. thing the, the i positive. had to force them because they the, all they did was computers and tablets anyway go ahead go ahead no no go, no, go. no 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 what i was gonna say was a lot of things you know it's it's always um easy to say how bad COVID has been and it has been bad. I'm not gonna deny that. The the deaths, the unemployment, the uh the tragedy the a oh, lot of tragedies, right? But also it's it was kinda nice because we had to slow down. And right. that's that's when it, it coincided with the same time I um I cut my hours and started focusing on raising two little kids. Um but silver lining right i think that's that's growing up in a hispanic family mexican family you know again going back to the head of the household mom um <clears throat> mexican catholic um you look at the silver lining you have to look at that you know we 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 laugh inappropriately you have to you have to you have to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and say okay yeah it sucks but what have we been able to do been able to been able to keep my kids at home and make sure that they're raised and two and three year olds say please and thank you right some manners mm -hmm. um it's i gotta tell you a story finish i'll tell you oh, a story. no no i i took my love of cooking and to another level to where right was playing with different flavors and different spices and um kind of got tired of the same thing uh between you know uh the other half night we're cooking and it just got to this sucks tired of it want some new flavor want some because we couldn't travel so we couldn't go to the places where we normally do to go get spices and 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 the the flavors we wanted so learn how to cook them at home and they're not that hard they're like 15 20 minutes get really. creative yes no. and that's i make thing. my own taco seasoning yeah I make my own taco seasoning. I make my own chili seasoning. Nice. I make my own jambalaya seasoning, Cajun Ooh. seasoning, because it's not it's not hard. And that way, I I my mind it's fresher, and yeah. you don't have all the additives to keep it from clumpy and all that. Right. And it's really not my kids do it actually. Like when I do taco, mm -hmm. my my seven year old likes to measure the the different things. So, but if a seven year old can know, do it, and that was one way. It. Oh, yeah. Well, and I, you know, it's a way for me to teach him math in my mind, at least. So okay. he, you know, right. I would say, like, you, you have one teaspoon or one tablespoon, three teaspoons, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But, right, right. Um, and it's not for everybody. It's not, you know, not everybody has enough time to cook even 30 minutes. Um, so, you know, bet next best thing, like you were saying, you can have your meal replacements, like the protein right. bars or the shakes. Right. Um, you can do those um, order home, order to cook home. Mm -hmm. I think there are some companies actually here in Wichita, at least, that um, prepare like healthier meals. Yeah. And then yeah, they deliver are. them to your house. Like yeah. they actually take them to your house. Yes. Um, and then if you have to go to a fast food, then you have to go, but then look at what all they have. See if there's anything that's a little bit better. And we all know what's better. We just don't want to listen to the back of, you know, the voice in the back of our head. But right. you know, when you read a menu, you know what's better right. <laughs> than, than not, you know. Um, so do the best you can with what you have is what I would say. Right. Um, if you want to do something, then start with making sure you have breakfast. Right. Once you have that, then move on to bringing your lunch or be having a better lunch, right. drinking your water, 
Right. You know, going back to how do you know you're drinking enough water? Look at the color of your oh, urine, your pee. You know, yeah. is it dark? Is it pale? Is it kind of yellowish? Yeah. Um. So. Well, thank you. This is that. Been, I think this, is, this has been a, re- a really <laughs> fun afternoon, and thank you for your expertise because because I know that you pointed out multiple things that even as a physician I am not aware of. Right. So that's where I always, I've always appreciated your expertise and Thank you. your friendship. So, ah, you know, I, I do hope, I do hope that whoever's listening takes this and actually just instead of like, ah, oh, this is it's too hard for me. Oh, I can't do that. Actually stop and think, you know, what can I do? Mm-hmm. What am I doing that I know doesn't work? Like that I know it's making me sick. And what small change can I do? Can I decrease my soda a little bit? Can I drink a little bit more water even if I don't decrease my soda? Can I eat a a, a, a fruit a day? You know, right. Anything to get you started. Can I start exercise? Sometimes people that want to feel better start with exercise because to them that's easier than eating different. That's sure. fine. That's how yeah. Keith started. Keith yeah. started exercise. Well, my, my, he started exercising because I was exercising. So he wanted to spend more time with me, but <laughs> that said, <Yeah. laughs> that's how he started. You know, yeah. he started exercising more and yeah. then he got into the whole eating better. Yeah. And he actually lost like 20 pounds oh, wow. because he was exercising and then he would eat just one meal a day back then. So he started eating three meals a day. Cause I was like, uh, no, if we're going to be together. You're going to eat better. Come on. Right. So, you know. He would eat breakfast, lunch, and supper instead of a big old supper from a fast food. Right. And he lost like 20 pounds. Oh, wow. So, so you know. It's just amazing how small changes can happen. And, yep. and he's a veteran and he's a stubborn guy that I love deeply, but he's a stubborn guy. And, you know, he's a typical veteran man, the stuff and, you know. Yeah. And he did it. Yeah. So, just so. stop and think, what can you do? You know, what, what small change can you do? Do you, are you, and if you don't want to do any change, that's fine, but just know that things are not going to change then, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's either you spend the extra 20, $30 and quite frankly, if it's, it's, if it's, um, plant strong and you cut out the processed crap and, um, a lot of the processed meats, right. So a lot of, um, ground beef or whatever something leaner it's like yeah. turkey it actually drops your bill it actually drops your grocery bill by about 20 30 yeah. percent right eggs are super cheap that's why i keep saying eggs are amazing eggs yeah. are super cheap one or two a day it's all you need you don't need any more than that unless you exercise religiously every day then right. it's fine right because then you're burning all that extra cholesterol or that extra fat right um if you're not exercising then a couple eggs a day it's fine what and they make us what about egg whites? So I, you know, it depends. So egg whites, if you want more than two eggs, then egg mm-hmm. whites are what you want. But you don't want to cut the egg yolk out because the egg yolk is what has most of your vitamins and your mm-hmm. minerals in okay. the egg. So the egg white has mainly protein, mm-hmm. right? So I always say at least one whole egg mm-hmm. and then as many egg whites as you want. Okay. Right. Because then you got that nutrition from the egg yolk, you got the protein from the egg white, and you got the volume in the low calories from the egg whites. Right, right, right. Okay. So, but at least, you know, and that's why I say I, I'm not a typical dietitian. I'm like, eat your egg, you know. Yeah. And a boiled egg is, um, I like it, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a good, good snack. Like I said, you can prep ahead of time. I do 10 usually, eight or 10, depending mm-hmm. on how into it I am. Right. Um boil them 20 minutes at least i boil in 20 minutes and then peel them wait till they're cool peel them put them in the fridge cool they'll last about a week after that it's not a good deal you know okay so so but my last... kiddos about a week okay okay if you are going to start that's actually and we, i know we we kind of said goodbye but we're hispanic so we're not gonna leave in like right, 30 right. more minutes <laughs> that said um Keep in mind, if you are going to be planning and cooking and cooking ahead and putting food away, um, there are, you know, there is an amount of time that food can last for freshness, flavor, and actually food safety. Mm -hmm. So be very careful with that. 
Um, there is a website yeah. uh, for the USDA. The USDA has a really good website on timetables for mm -hmm. how long each thing can last. Okay. Um, for the most part, if it's something that you cooked and it's already cooked, it will be fine in a refrigerator that functions good, not a <laughs> old, you know, garage refrigerator that's halfway working. A good refrigerator about a week. Have you been to our garage? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Maybe. No. <laughs> I, you know, because I always think of some people, you know, don't really use it, refrigerators that much, so they don't really care. And they start cooking and <laughs> these refrigerators don't really work. Are you um, serious? Yeah. I I remember I've, I've been a dietitian for <laughs> right. a long right. time, right. right? Since I started medical school, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, well, 2004, so, you know, I'm that old. But that said, um, it would be about a week, you know. Yeah, yeah, After yeah. that, you're going to have either food safety issues or right. flavor freshness issues, you know, sure. like it's not going to be the same. Yeah. Um, so try it out because, I, you know, I don't know. To me, and honestly, and that's why I'm always like, it's in you. Right. Because I hate it cooking. I hate it. Like I deeply hate it cooking. Right, right. And I did not know how to cook anything more than rice, beans, and maybe a meat, like in the pressure cooker. I love the pressure cooker, by the way. Um, and um, or frying. That's mm -hmm. it. You know, I had the vegetables because I was telling people to have vegetables. So, you know, I was going to have the vegetables, too. But I hate it cooking. And then my dad died. And then I found myself because I used to live with my dad and my dad used to cook and I used to do dishes. That was our arrangement. Mm -hmm. So, so he died and I found myself, um, with family because I had my one son at that point point. Mm -hmm. and I was starting with my ex-husband and a family and somebody had to cook. Somebody had to, because we we're not going to eat out because I told my patients not to eat out, you know? Right. And so I, kind of had to start I had no choice like I had to start and then now I love it once I learned how easy it is once I learn what what goes with what mm -hmm. flavor wise mm -hmm. it's super easy and that's why uh, you know give yourself time be patient with yourself if you're starting new things mm -hmm. be patient with yourself because you know you're not an expert and but you're trying yeah. And whatever you're doing is going to be better than whatever you were doing before. So true. There's that. <laughs> true. Got to start somewhere and you learn by making mistakes and doing the wrong pairing. Oh my gosh. Don't be discouraged. I almost by burnt, you know, one time I almost burnt a place I was living in. I'm not going to say so. <laughs> I can because, corroborate that story. I think it's just a learning curve, right? Because Don't. right. <laughs> just, but you know what? That, that, Again, derailing a little bit. That's why I have fire, fire extinguishers, extinguishers everywhere in my house. <laughs> so, change them every year, so, guys. Every year, you got to change them. Or at least look at the little thing that yeah. says if it's good or not, right? Because mine has the, the meter thing. So it was funny because I have, I truly have fire extinguishers everywhere in my house. So when, when this flame erupted, I, okay, I'm going to say it. It was in my house right now, in this house that I have right now. When this flame erupted, and we were, and so my husband and my oldest were there. And then I was like, oh my gosh, the, the kitchen is on fire. So Keith was like, why is that fire extinguisher that you have? You have like 50 million fire extinguishers in the house. <laughs> and I was like, and then my son was like, oh, I know where it is. So he ran down because it was that right that, um, by the end of the stairs in the, in the basement. Of course. Ran down the stairs, got it. And, you know, the fire was out. Right. And I was like, I was so proud of everybody, but I was like, oh my God, this could have ended so, so much different. Yeah. So lesson learned, have a fire extinguisher and which I did, I did have one by the kitchen, right. but you know, my son thought of the one quicker. So, you know, he got it quicker, but so right. that's why I have one in every corner in this house because you never know. You know, one of the aversions I had to cooking initially was um, I almost set my parents' kitchen on fire when I was in high school. Um, it was an old gas stove, and uh, yeah, the I don't know what idiot put the paper towels right above the damn stove. <laughs> so of course, oh lord, yeah, this doesn't end well. I'm oh just, lord, I forgot. 
I had the burner on, had something on, explaining something. Paper towels kind of trickle down. Yeah. Let's see, come on. something's <sighs> burning, and there's this flame climbing up the paper towels. I almost getting the paper towel hold, and like, <laughs> oh, oh shit! <laughs> you know, it's just like, okay, we cut the paper towels down. Do you know? And but I don't know. This it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm telling you. But you don't. But you didn't stop, right? Yeah, you kind of got scared, and I don't know. I no, we laughed about it now. We I laughed about it now because no, nothing burned down, you know. But keep a fire extinguisher. Don't walk away from an open flame. You know. No, um, never. Um, that's one thing I never do. Right, but that's one thing that somebody like me who has multiple squirrels going right. Ooh, shiny ball. I, I got to remind myself. Right. You know, and that's why I like some of the things like the slow cooker, <laughs> the air fryer, or the, you know, the Instant Pot and I don't get along. We're, we're, uh, right. we're, we're enemies. Um, but that's the reason why we have a, an electric stove now so that doesn't happen. But make sure to clean the electric stove so that way you don't have a grease fire like I had three right. weeks ago. And the oven. Oh, see, I'm telling you. Or the oven. Um, <laughs> But here's the deal, too. Um, and I've been lucky, of course, because I started the culinary arts cl classes, right? So I'm yeah. learning a lot from them right. and techniques and what makes things better, flavor, and all that. So YouTube, like we were talking about earlier, has mm -hmm. amazing videos. Just know your sources. You know, don't click on Influencer A. Click on, you know, there's a bunch of culinary schools that have their own channels, including Butler Community College, which is the one I'm going to. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they have their own channel. Really, really interesting recipes. I've um, I've done most of them, mm -hmm. I got to admit, but I like cooking now, baking right. specifically. Okay. Um, so so take your time, learn, learn your, the techniques to how to cut better. Because like I was, so I was talking to uh, Chef Derek, who is my, the chef I uh, works with me. And so he was, we were talking about something and it was cabbage. Mm -hmm. and I was like, that darn cabbage is so hard to cut, man. Like, it's so hard. It's a pain in the butt to cut. Right. And he was like, what do you do to cut it? And so I said, and he's like, uh, that's why it's so hard. So he, you know, grab a cabbage, kind of showed me how to do it. I was like, that is just so much easier. Yeah. And it's so much quicker, too. The way I was doing it, because it was so hard to cut, to cut it, mm -hmm. it would take me forever to cut it. Really, and okay. the way he did, of course, he's a he's an expert, though, right? So he right, has a little right. bit of agility. Yeah. But it's so much easier. Yeah. So, but anyway, it'll, it'll also watch change, videos. It also change the way it tastes, is my understanding. Bitterness or no? No. No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. No. Cool. No. It was the same. The same as if I would have cut it. So um, the same with like pineapple, fresh pineapple. There's easier ways to cut it watermelon there's easier way to, to cut it you know mm -hmm. um i actually think of cutting pineapples and watermelon as the stress the stressor <laughs> see that would just raise my anxiety level i'm just like yeah I'm not gonna <laughs> i'll buy it pre-cut no but you know again so that's yeah. that's the thing it's knowing yourself right you know right. It, it doesn't work for you so you buy it cut i love to cut it so i'll buy it where it, and it's my de-stressor but and i also have to practice knife skills so you know i cut i Kill two birds with a stone kind of sure. thing. But, and you know, my, my kiddos, actually kids' daughters and um, my boys have actually all learned how to cut watermelon and cantaloupe oh, wow. and yeah, and nice. pineapple. Yep, yep. So, because I learned, right? I know that it was not taught to me and I knew how hard it was and how hard of a struggle it was for me mm -hmm. to learn as an adult right. versus a kid. So I'm trying to make it a point to teach them right now. Not right. back, you know, not when they're older. Um, and they don't have a choice. That's the other thing. I don't know, at least in my house, mm -hmm. if I say, come help me, they have to come help me. So it, yeah. it helps us spend some time together. Because if yeah. otherwise it's me cooking in the kitchen by myself, you know, and they're and playing video games. Right, right. No, I think it goes back to um, just kind of the Latin, the Latin culture. And, you know, I, I don't know. That's the way I was raised. But well, it's been great seeing you. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Of course. And Anytime. This was fun. Yeah. 
You and put I, me on a soapbox. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, though, this is great because it reminds us that, you know, um, we're humans, we don't know everything, right? So we gotta we gotta look in, into yeah. ourselves and hopefully if there's more in the future, we might dive into some of the studies that are out there. Absolutely. Anything else that you want me to talk to you about, diet and nutrition and health that I can help, just let me know. Appreciate it. Remember you are worthy, you are human. Take care. To perpetuate the hate Hey, I think it's time to turn around Hey, I begin again Hey, I think that I can Look in the mirror And start again Second time around Second time